I just pulled in here at the ranch and my timing couldn't have been better because there are two, well, a cow and a calf that I need to look at this morning. And I just happened to pull in here while they're all coming up into the corral to get a drink. So I'm gonna let them finish mulling on up in here and then I'll go shut the gate on them. calf that I need to look at has hoof rot and I've already treated her once for it but it's not progressing as much as I would like it to so I'm gonna get her in the chute again and give her a second treatment and uh, this time I'm gonna use a topical as well as an injection this is gonna be a good opportunity to show you guys what it looks like kind of how to identify it and what to do about it if you do get it All right, well that was easy. A lot of times when they see me walk out here to close the gate on them, they know that I'm up to something and they all come running, but not the case today. I think we know who the chosen one is today. Okay, I think this is her right here. You can see how she's kind of holding her back foot up in an unnatural way. That's uh, that's her, my right, dear. Poor thing. I can just hear it now. She's thinking, not this guy again. So obviously you could see she's walking up in here. She's got a very severe limp. And as bad as that looks, believe it or not, she's actually showing progress of getting better. I'd say when I gave her her first treatment, she wouldn't even put that foot on the ground. And now, although she does hobble, she is putting a little bit of weight on it. She's touching it to the ground. So I got to assume that it's feeling a little bit better, but I, I want her to feel a lot better. So we're going to give her another round of antibiotics. And like I said, I got a topical treatment that I want to try on her as well. This is what my grandpa always used to do was copper tox on the hoof and he wouldn't actually give an injection. So I think taking the two-pronged approach. Hopefully this is the last time that I'll have to get her up here. Well, her foot is pretty dirty, so I think the first thing we're gonna do is hose it down and try to get all the mud and manure out from in between her toes. Now getting kicked, hopefully. It's important to get that foot clean because we are putting a topical on there and if there's a bunch of mud and manure packed between her toes then that that medicine's not going to be able to do its job so i mean i i won't lie to you i think that is a little bit painful for them when you spray it out like that but it it's you have to do it you, you need the medicine to work so it looks pretty good now i think uh, we need to dry off a little bit but while we're kind of waiting for it to dry, it's a good time to give her her shots. A little trick when you're drawing from a glass bottle like this is to pressurize it first with air 
so that when you try to draw it out it, it's kind of working with you instead of against you so like here I'm gonna pump a little bit of air inside there and that's gonna create pressure inside the bottle so that when I go to draw it it should come in a little bit easier I love usually only see it with vaccines when they have a plastic bottle that can collapse as you draw out of it and those are easy to draw from but these glass bottles are a little tougher and I'm sure there's a reason why it needs to be in a glass bottle but I don't know it trying to get our air out I think it's somewhere around 70 or 80 percent of all lameness in cattle is because of hoof rot i was actually shocked by that number so <laughs> if you see a cow limping there's an 80 percent chance that it's hoof rot that's making her do it but the the more sort of concrete way to identify it or the way that i think is easiest to spot it is that the foot swells a lot and you'll notice that the toes spread. On a normal cow foot, their toes should be very close together, almost touching or, or touching in some cases. And on a foot rot foot, the toes will have like a one inch gap and then you'll notice a lot of swelling right above the hoof. That's probably the easiest way to identify it in the field because obviously you can't get up real close to them and look at it. Like anything, early treatment is key and if this is allowed to go untreated, uh, bad things can happen. I think we caught this girl early enough that she's gonna be all right. Um, she's just gonna need a little bit of time to heal. I think that foot is dry enough now to get the copper tox on there. And I think what I'll do, we'll hit it once, kind of let it soak for a minute or two, and then we'll hit it again. And then I think I can turn this girl loose. I remember when I was a kid, the copper tox was all that grandpa would use on hoof rot cows. And I can remember several occasions um, going out in the field and trying to squirt this stuff on them while they were laying down so that we wouldn't have to get them up here in the chute. Of course, back in those days, we didn't have a nice chute like this. We just had a, a head gate, more or less. Well, I'm hoping in a few days we start seeing some noticeable improvement with that little heifer calf. But until then, I think the best thing that I can do is just leave her alone and let her heal. It's been a few days since I treated my cow that had a blown out abscess. And today we're gonna get her back in the chute, see how she's healing up and see if there's anything else that we need to do. I've been keeping a close eye on this cow over the last several days. And I will say that her demeanor and attitude doesn't okay i can't do this one-handed anyway her demeanor her attitude seems unaffected by all of this i don't get the impression that she feels bad at all so that's good <laughs> but we still need to make sure that this thing heals properly well she's somewhere in here <laughs> Close that door. Part of the trouble when you're giving multiple treatments to a cow is they learn that when they come in the chute, you're gonna poke and prod at them. They don't really like that. So it doesn't surprise me that she's not real happy about being in here. So we'll try to make this fast and get her back out as soon as we can. Whoa, yeah. That's why we build strong gates. Hey, he needs 
need to settle down, hon. It's not so bad. This time, not going to be as bad. Hold still. Let me get this off of you. We'll just cut that off. You can wear it. Wear that for a little while. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. It's kind of funny. Half of that adhesive just released on its own, and then the other half was on there so good that you almost couldn't get it off. So I think from here on out, we're not going to cover this anymore if I can avoid it. I know that we need this to drain. And the reason that I put the bandage on in the first place was just to sort of hold the clay up in there and to hopefully keep the flies off of it. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to combat that now, but uh, we'll think of something. So just for now, I'm going to put some of this wound coat on. Because the flies don't like this and they're trying to get in there. Try to keep them out if I can. I don't know how well the camera is able to see down there because it's so dark and you know the lighting is just I mean really couldn't be worse <laughs> but I think this actually does while it still looks nasty it looks better than it did a couple days ago so I think we're just gonna kind of carry on with the same treatment I'll go ahead and flush it with iodine again I think I'll, I'll again try to pat clay on it, but I'm not gonna try to cover it. So this time I need to make sure that it is plenty dry before I put the clay on so that hopefully it stays on there. All right, I'm gonna let that iodine sit for a minute and do its thing, and then I'll try to dab off any of the uh, residue, I guess, with a towel. Try to get that as dry as I can, and then we'll pack some clay in there and send her on her way. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. I uh, went ahead and hosed her down, just because it is hot out here, and I feel bad making her stand here in the sun. So I hose her shoulders down a little bit to try to cool her off, trying to keep her hind end dry. I don't know if it helped or not, but it seemed like a nice thing to do. We're looking good. I'm going to go ahead and dab this with a towel and then I think we'll be ready for clay. I don't know how long the clay is going to stay on without a bandage holding it. And I'm just so torn here because conventional wisdom says that you never bandage an abscess or an open sore like this because it needs to be able to drain. But I also feel like flies getting up in there can't be good either. So I, I'm not really sure uh, what to do. We tried it one way. So now we'll try it this way. And then in a couple days, I'll probably get her back in and look at it. Or because she doesn't have a bandage on, I'll be able to observe her better in the field and see how things are going. And maybe we won't have to get her in again. That would be the ideal uh, scenario. We'll just have to see. Too bad, really. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. Uh, she's huffing and puffing, so I want to get her out of the chute, and then uh, if there's anything else that I think I need to say, we'll say it then. Looked like the clay stayed on through the uh, exit there, so hopefully it stays on. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll just kind of have to keep a close eye on it, and if I need to get her back in and repack it, or if it looks like it's just healing fine, then you know we'll just kind of play it by ear. I know a lot of you asked for an update on this cow to see how she was doing, so there you have it. We went from a gaping hole 
to now just a hole. So hopefully the next time we look at her, it has closed up or it, or almost closed up. And when I do get her in to check her out again, I'll bring you guys along. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.